Hello, my name is John Speck. Welcome to this All 24 video. Uh, today, Coach Waterman and I have a special guest, Coach Tommy Dennison, the offensive coordinator at York University. Thanks for being with us, Coach. Yeah, so I'm excited for one clip. This is, uh, this is, this is going to be the highlight of my day. I've been up <laughs> right. for this. Let's do awesome. it. Awesome. So as you said, we're going to do a one clip. So none of us have prepared for this. We're going to choose a random play and see what we can see. Coach Waterman, would you do the honors? Uh, let's stop there. Okay. We got a second and four here, guys, early in the game. Uh, second and four. looks like the ball's almost between the hashes there in the middle of the field. Um, looks like a two-back set with a wing uh, to this near side. So just looking at this initial formation, Coach, and the defensive alignment, Coach Dennison, what, what are some things you're thinking of? So, you know, I see a six-man box with, with, seven, with seven players, including the H-back and the tailback. So I'm thinking that, uh, you know, there, there's an opportunity to run the ball here on second and four. Uh, especially with an H back in there. Uh, though I do see that that, uh, you know, it's really tough because are they on, right in the middle? So we'll call him the Sam linebacker here down at the bottom of the screen. Looks like he may add in. So if he adds in, uh, you know, obviously now they've evened up the numbers and, and you know, I guess anything would be kind of, uh, you, know, you, could you could attack any field zone with, I guess, uh, uh, equal abilities. They do have a two high shell. So I would say kind of any vertical concept right now would be difficult. Though that could change if the Sam comes, uh, somebody may lower themselves as well uh, and declare. You may see that field half also lower uh, himself and the free rotate number eight here in the middle of the field. But I'm interested to see where, where it goes. I, I'm thinking run the ball. Let's, let's go with run. I'm curious, Coach, because I just heard you kind of going through your process uh, verbally there. Do you have a rule of thumb when you're deciding, you know, does that player count as in the box? You know, do you have something concrete or is it more game plan? Uh, we do. Uh, we, this, is, this would be a formation that we would stay away from because it does, it, like my thought process on this formation was, the, the, and because there was so much of it, is the reason why we don't run this formation. Um, there's a lot of layers defensively right now that can, that, can be, uh, that, can, that can happen, right? So you've got like, I guess you've got four potential blitzers here, right? Um, you know, you've got your Mac, your Will, your Sam, and then you, even your half, in, in, in a potential opportunity here to come. And then obviously the free can cover down on both ways. You could end up in a two high. So there's a lot of variation here on what the defense can, can do. And, and a lot of players that can, you know, obviously you can have a six or a seven man box with only two steps of movement. So that's why this would be a formation that we don't run very much, but there are opportunities to have a lot of success inside this formation. It's just not, not one that we tend to use. I see, I see run as a, as a tremendous opportunity here though. Uh, we'll see if that happens. Perfect. Let's run it forward a little bit. As you can see, a little bit of movement there already. And you, you end up getting that blitz from that field half. And the offense takes the uh, – so a lot happening there on this second and four, guys. Where do you, where do you want to start on this? Well, you got two edge. You got them coming off – off the fullback side so they're coming off uh you know got one guy that's going to kind of come inside and one guy to the quarterback so it's definitely a, a run run blitz on that boundary side to the fullback yeah they're definitely trying to take runaway coach i agree with you here and um you know the challenge you know uh, to, to coach Beck's point a minute ago is that you know this is this is the reason why you know we we have tried to stay away from this formation it does provide some tremendous opportunities for the defense to disguise. And, you know, we were talking about a two high shell and, and, and now here they've got two off the edge, right? Almost in a moment's notice. What, what uh, Acadia does a really nice job here of though is isolating the field corner here uh, with a smash concept. And, you know, uh, you know great job of, of working the six yard hitch here to the field and, and the corner pushing vertical and forcing that field corner to cover the deep third or the, uh, I guess, yeah, deep third in this case. Uh, and he continues to carry vertical. Quarterback does a great job of making a quick decision, which uh, allows for him not to feel any pressure. And coach, the ball's in the middle of the field as opposed to a hash. Does that change your thinking a little bit in terms of uh, from an offensive perspective? Yeah, it does. It does tighten the field zone to the field, and, and it, it makes the boundary a, a longer throw. So, when, you know, when we're attacking, we're looking for, you know, I won't, I won't be shy to say this, we're looking for the shortest throw with the least moving parts. So if we could sit there and throw hitch screen or hitches down the field, we would, uh, because we know that our completion percentage is going to be really high in everything that we do. Uh, when you get to the middle of the field, 
you've created a longer throw to the short part of the field for us, right? So the, the boundary, which would typically be at most, you know, 24 yard throw or something like that, has now extended to almost, uh, you know, 35 yards ish. So, you know, it's putting more stress on the quarterback, you know, his arm strength, and then more stress on him to be accurate. Um, you know, obviously, this is, a, this is Acadia from last year, right? They've got a tremendously talented quarterback. You know, he appeared in the East West Bowl. Uh, you know, and this is, this, is, uh, this is a great read and decision. And, and uh, obviously, he's given his team a chance to be successful. And they've got a great receiving core. So, so this concept puts a lot of stress on that corner. And needing only four yards, you know, uh, if they had played man, you know, now you've got a chance for a big play in behind it. And coach, you know, I know uh, you talked, uh, you know, quite a bit about your, your philosophy on numbers and taking the advantage. Does the second and four, does that weigh in much at all? Or is it more about you running your system? Yeah, so I, so we don't ever attack down in distance uh, unless it's like second and two or less or second and one and less. You know, we attack a numeric advantage at all times. I feel like we get into a slippery slope when we start attacking down in distance, specifically on second and five or more, like or second and seven plus gets really, really dangerous. Because what ends up happening is on those situations, we're attacking for that first down throw, but we're holding the ball longer. So in addition to obviously getting all throws are probably going to be first down throws, because we're holding the ball longer, what's going to also enter the equation is more strip sack fumbles, you know, uh, games that are played up front twists may get home more often because the quarterback's going to hold the ball. So even though your completion percentage that's going to result in a first down is going to go up or completion, uh, I guess, not, not percentage in terms of uh, what his completion percentage is going to be, but the amount of times he completes that ball for a first down is going to go up. So too are bad things like strip sack fumbles, incompletions, second window throws that cause our quarterback to be more uncomfortable and inaccurate. So we try and minimize that by attacking with a numeric advantage. And we find that like, again, if you're willing to, you know, empty the box out, you're going to find yourself in a position that we're going to be able to run for that first down or get five, six yards and at least put the decision into our head coach's hands to say, Hey, you know what, this is a good situation for us to go for it. Or, you know what, I feel more comfortable punting here. We've, but, but again, we get second and 14, we get 12 yards, maybe we're making a decision, but we're punting with a plus 12 from our previous play versus trying to stick that second window tight throw to the field side out. And that ball gets battered away by good coverage. And now we've lost 12 yards on the punt as well, right? So that field position game and how do all three phases of the game play together? So we tend not to attack by down and distance unless, like I said, if we get into a second and one, second and two, third and one, third and two, you'll see us uh, a high probability of, of us actually attacking down a distance because, you know, it's deflating when you're in second and two and, 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 and you throw the football and you're incomplete, right? And, and a lot of coaches will say, okay, well, we're going to punt now because that feeling of deflation that we weren't successful in that second and two. So we want to put ourselves into a position. If we fall forward, we're probably going to at least have a third and one that we can, you know, run, sneak or plunge a three, third and a half yard to do the same thing. But, you know, like, again, uh, in this particular case, I mean, I, I'm not sure that they're attacking down in distance here. I think that they're, you know, I think that they're attacking, you know, the field here and they're attacking the field corner. Uh, and, and, you know, it happens to throw the first down distance. But if it had been man, you know, this is a great opportunity for them to get a big play in the pass game. And I think that that's what they were maybe even hoping for in this particular case. Perfect. Let's watch it. Uh, we'll watch the tight here briefly, just see what we can see from this angle. Again, on that overload pressure. Yeah, so really great job by the age back here, right? Where, you know, obviously uh, they, they slide their end down and the, and the edge player comes off the edge. Um, you know, obviously there's still, there, there's still one, one negative player there all the way coming from the other side. And it looks like, you know what, this looks like it, uh, you know, the way the running back sets up, sets up here, I'm almost wondering if this was an abandoned RPO. He definitely ends up coming back. You know, it's hard to say because I don't, because, because the D line and the linebackers all kind of come downhill. Yeah. We don't get that physical distortion and the tackle does look maybe like he pass sets a little bit, but uh, that running back coming up off the edge like that, or maybe play action pass. Yeah. It looks like uh, a play action possibly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, the challenge with it, with, with play action or even RPO 
is that, you know, they can't account for this extra defender out here and he's got to try and come underneath. Right. So the quarterback, I mean, I can't speak enough about the job that he does of, of, you know, throwing this ball so seamlessly with a running back now right underneath them, uh, you know, and, and, and the running back doing a good job as well. Like some of the little things here where he avoids and tries to come back underneath late because he recognizes there's an extra edge defense. Something I didn't pick up on the wide, but you can see right there in the middle, like right underneath the quarterback, he's yeah. fighting back across uh, to try and protect his quarterback. And going back to the, yeah. 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 So, so kudos to them for getting this off and, and, and really counting for everybody in, in, uh, in the blitz. Awesome. Well, great breakdown. A lot of fun uh, talking some football with you, coach. That was great. Thanks, guys. Appreciate everything. Thanks, Tommy.